Hi guys, this is the review of question 7 on the Monash Fellowship Trial 2024.1. My name is Dr. Abrar Waliuddin, DMT at Frankston, the author of this question. So this question was a 35-year-old woman, 30 weeks gestation, presenting with shortness of breath and chest pain for two days. On examination, the woman was afebrile and orthopnic with mild pallor while coughing up pink frothy sputum. Respiratory of 34, sets of 90%, uh, blood pressure of 100 over 60, and tachycardic at the rate of 120. ECG showing a chronic left coronal branch block, and chest x ray showing features of cardiomegaly and, and, and pulmonary edema. So, this question asked for the first part was other than peripartum cardiomyopathy, list four conditions specific dependency which may result in right or left heart failure or both for four marks. So, obviously, intentionally made a little bit difficult by removing peripartum cardiomyopathy from your answer list. So really what I was looking for, there's a very long list. So pretty much anything that you can mention that would cause heart failure in a person, um, uh, especially uh, with the pregnancy focus, would give you a mark. Uh, the most obvious one that everybody put down was pulmonary embolism, which they needed to qualify by calling it a massive pulmonary embolism. Other ones that are down on the list, such as preeclampsia and neurotic embolism, were also given marks. A, a large chunk of people mentioned those. Not many people mentioned sepsis uh, or myocarditis. A lot of people mentioned worsening of pre existing rheumatic heart disease, which was mentioned in a lot of different ways with specifics of the valvular structures involved, which I was happy with as well. You could also talk about acute severe regurgitation and prolapse, and that was fine. Some people mentioned pituitary apoplexy uh, or tocolytic pulmonary edema. Not many people mentioned myocardial infarction, funny enough, and of course pre-existing cardiomyopathy. Overall, this was an easy question, but not many people scored full marks on this one either. So, Question part two will list two criteria that form the definition of peripartum cardiomyopathy for two marks. So this is a purely a knowledge check question. You either know this or you don't. So you either scored zero or maybe you scored one. Not many people scored two. Essentially, you have to remember that cardiomyopathy is an echo diagnosis. And so that's something that you need to mention that obviously when you have a diagnosis like that, the criteria will be based on echo evidence. So even if you didn't mention the ejection fraction, exact ejection fraction deficits, I would still give you a mark, but not many people even attempted to do that. It occurs peripartum, that's what makes it peripartum cardiomyopathy, and the period is a six-month period, one month pre, five months post peripartum, with other identifiable causes excluded. I was a little bit lenient in this question because not every resource that ASIM recommends actually talks about peripartum cardiomyopathy in a specific amount of detail, but there is a section in in some references, such as Campanelli, for example. But this question was done poorly in general by a lot of people, even allowing for that. Now, our patient has had a cardiac arrest. The next question is list the two criteria for a perimortem C-section, or in other words, a sustentive hysterotomy for two marks. The answer is maternal arrest within four minutes, so you need to make that decision and commence that within four minutes and a gestational age greater than 23 weeks. Uh, alternatively, using a frontal height above the abalacus, if you don't know the, the gestational age, so that would be about 20 weeks. So the, there's a lot of different uh, gestational ages mentioned in, in different sources, greater than 24 weeks, greater than 20 weeks, greater than 23 weeks. So the, I did make an allowance for people to answer that. Uh, overall, this question was done well. Then part D, list four adjustments you would make to ALS in a pregnant cardiac arrest patient for four marks. This was surprisingly done poorly uh, to a degree. So everybody mentioned CPR in the left lateral position uh, and manual refined displacement to, to relieve aortic cable compression, but probably not in that much detail. They often lumped them together. They are actually two different things even though the effect would be roughly the same. So there are two different things, two, two different adjustments. So you can actually put them separately for two marks. Hands higher on the sternum for chest compressions was a very common and popular answer. IV and IO access about the diaphragm was also used quite frequently. Early intubation was mentioned and prepared for a sustentive hysterotomy as well. So overall, 
this question people use different bits of it but not many people put all four of them together to get the full mark so i think this is sort of shows that i think people have bits and pieces of this knowledge there's a little bit of a deficit as to putting the complete picture together in terms of the statistics on this question uh, overall quite a poorly done question by majority of candidates there were a lot of threes fives and sixes out of 12. the lowest mark was two out of 12. Uh, the highest mark was 10 out of 12 that was achieved by just one person. There may be a couple of nines, a few eights, and many sevens and sixes. Mostly, uh, this was a knowledge deficit, a knowledge check question um, problem, but also there were some technique and terminology issues with, uh, with some candidates. So that's what I would say. With regards to my tips, uh, please review the chapter and done on perimortem cesarean section. Please review the management of heart failure and what modifications you should make in the pregnant patient. This is a pretty legitimate follow-up question for some of these type of question, um, questions in the exam. Review the resuscitation of the pregnant patient who presents with a variety of different conditions. Uh, thank you.